Welcome back. My name is Juice from Juice's Arthropods. It's been over a month since we've done a video. It's been wild. We did the San Jose, nope, San Mateo Reptile Expo from Reptile Realms. We've just done a bunch of things. We're rebranding a lot of stuff. We're kind of determining what direction we want to go. Any business is not going to sustain itself for very long if they don't decide ultimately what they want to do. And one of the things I wanted to try out, because I know people love top five lists, is I wanted to, it also doing care guides, that's not going away, I wanted to do some top five lists. Just because I know this is a very common question that comes up at these expos is, what pet do you recommend? I'm not really into arthropods. I'd like to be into them. So since I've gotten enough hits from that question alone, I'm like, screw it. Let's do a top five starter arthropod videos. So strap in. Some of you guys are going to hate the choices I've made. But in my opinion, money aside, these are the top five beginner arthropods. So before I get into the actual list, let's talk about what criteria I used. Criteria number one. It had to be user-friendly, meaning if you were a 20-some-year-old that's getting into arthropods or you're a child, well, let's say 12 plus, you you had to be able to have this pet and not be at risk of actual like problems, meaning like no old world tarantulas are on this list. Secondarily, I don't have any colony uh, bugs at the end of the day. What I mean by that is they can't be something that is a colony in itself. I don't have isopods on this because in my opinion, isopods are not pets. Don't come at me, isopod people. So what I thought when I created this list was these had to fit a couple criteria. One, they made good pets. Two, they were easy to take care of. Three, this wasn't going to be something that uh, would necessarily break the bank, but money wasn't going to be part of this list. So I'll do a totally different list for most affordable uh, arthropods. And then the last factor for me was just when I started doing this in general, what did I have the most enjoyment from? Like which pets did I find were the best and which ones were the easiest? Which also means, unfortunately, with the exception of one of them, beetles is a hard no, man. If I got to raise this thing from a damn larva, I want nothing to do with that. So let's get started with number five. So for number five, I'm, I had kind of a tie with this one. It is a tarantula. It's either the curly hair tarantula, the Toledo, uh, Toledo Cottle Alba Pelosum, or the Gramostola pulchra, that being the Brazilian black tarantula. The why a tarantula made this list for me was because ultimately, despite how scary they might be for arachnophobes, tarantulas are easily one of the easiest pets to take care of. When it came to the curly hair and the Gramostola, they had a couple criteria that made them make this list. One, coolness factor. I mean, tarantulas are awesome. And both of them are really legit. The curly hair is the, uh, I mean, literally the end, like it looks exactly like what you imagine with a tarantula. And the Gramostola pulchra has got that black sheen goth look, which is super dope. The number two reason for this was the fact that they had both of them, for the most part, had relatively chill personalities. I've had lots of people recommend other tarantulas that were, oh, this is a great starter. And then I've owned them and I've had multiples of them and they are not good pets. Curly hair tarantulas are typically a really good starter tarantula. Gramostola pulchra, just as good, in my opinion, honestly, a better tarantula. It's just a little bit more expensive. So pick one of these two. But in terms of how to take care of these guys, it's literally just feed them on occasion, keep a water dish, keep their temperatures right. And man, these guys will live like 20 plus years. They're the easiest pet on the planet, with the exception of some of the rest of these on this list. Number four will be of no surprise to anybody, but I want to preface this. This is the shortest lived creature on this list, because remember, lifespan is really important when you're picking out your best friend, right? So Phidippus regius, or the regal jumping spider, takes the number four count, in my opinion. The why behind this is that even if you're a child, the chances of you honestly getting bit by this thing is very, very slim. And it tells you pretty much consistently that it's going to bite you and you know it's going to happen before it does. They can be held. They're super chill. And this is a great pet for people that want to get started in the actual spider hobby. If you've worked with isopods, you've worked with beetles, you've worked with other things, and you want to get started in true spiders, I can think of no other more user-friendly uh, true spider at the end of the day. 
These guys almost didn't make the list, though, because unfortunately their lifespan is like two, two and a half years maximum. However, their cuteness factor really supersedes this, and the intellect that these guys bring to the table is going to make an amazing, amazing pet. In terms of actual care for these guys, in a gist, spray down their tank a little bit, don't give them a water dish because they'll drown, feed them on occasion, and then wave to them as they cutely walk in your hand. Number three almost didn't make this list due to the exorbitant cost of them, and while some of them are now captive bred, they were also exclusively wild caught for a very long time. And while I do have some on this list that are almost exclusively wild caught, uh, I wanted to also add these guys in because they make just amazing pets. So for number three, the Archespiro Streptus Gigas, or Giant African Millipede, is such an awesome pet. They These guys can live upwards of 20 years. They get upwards of 13 inches long. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this is one of the easiest millipedes you can take care of. Have a giant 35 gallon bucket uh, or, or whatever, something really large, Put a bunch of rotten wood and really good substrate in there and then put half a cork around in there, add rotten food in there, and then keep half of it bone dry and the other half damp. And you have a home that this thing is going to be totally fine in or make an elaborate terrarium. Who cares? But it's got to be a really large 20 to 40 gallon tank at the end of the day. They're an awesome pet that's easy to handle. They're so big, nothing can eat them. The only thing you have to really worry about is dropping these guys because of their sheer amount of weight they'll pop like a grape but beyond that these guys are easy 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 pets and they've definitely earned that number three spot from the sheer amount of time that you're going to have them as a really dope pet for our number two spot they are the only exclusively wild caught and yes some people have bred them but for the most part they are not and we're working on it but they take time they are the exclusively the only wild caught species on here. They're also the only beetle on here. And I feel like I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't add these because it's starter arthropods. And number two is the Asbolus varicosus or the blue feigning death beetle. These guys can live in groups. They can live communally with other beetles. They can live communally with scorpions. These are the hardiest creature on this list by far. The only other creature that's hardier is the number one spot. And in terms of a pet, these guys are awesome. Some of the, I have people all the time that will send me videos and, and give me updates on their species. We've learned recently uh, from Artography over there on the East Coast that they actually really like to climb, which I thought was very interesting. So these are just a cool species that are always uh, being investigated in and people are learning more about them. And you know, we're learning how to breed them at this point, which is insane that it's taken us this long when they've been in the hobby for as long as they have but they're just an insanely hardy species you know they're a type of ironclad beetle at the end of the day that if you can it takes essentially a drill just to punch a hole through these guys so if you somehow manage to kill these you are less nurturing than a desert our number one spot is the sexiest pet on this list the madagascar hissing cockroach Gramphophorina portentosa, I butchered that Latin, who cares, is by far the hands down the best pet arthropod. And I know what all of you guys are thinking. This is roach propaganda. And you're right, it is. But here's the thing. Three year lifespan lives in a colony if you want it to or can live individually. You know what you feed it? just some proteins that you have laying around like some dog food give it whatever food scraps you're eating i've left them in the garage on accident it wasn't my fault they had babies in there and i didn't know it and i came back six months later in a 90 degree garage and guess what they had survived these guys are the hardiest creature on the planet they're a freaking roach species man you literally cannot kill these guys unless you are seriously seriously messing it up you want to talk about a thing that doesn't really need much food boom madagascar hissing cockroach what do you got to do give it food sometimes give it some water other than that again roach it's so easy to take care of these guys that I recommend them to parents for kids because you know what? It's a pet that when it doesn't like what you're doing, it yells at you. It's so awesome. So yes, my number one spot, hands down, unmoving, unbudging, dying on this hill, the Madagascar hissing cockroach. I hope you guys like this list. We're going to be doing a lot more of these types of things in the future, unless you tell me you hate them, in which case we won't do them anymore. Thank you so much. 
Someone, for the love of God, send me a sign-off message. This is Juice from Juice's Arthropods. Good night.